Hello mountain chums. Bit of a change today, we're not actually in the mountains. Well, not the mountains of the Lake District anyway. Today we're in Dartmoor and hopefully have an exciting exploration. See some ancient wonders, some natural giants and some ruins, new and old. Starting from Tainecombe, which is just outside Chagford, on the east side of Dartmoor. I'm going to start by heading up to Kes Tor, otherwise known as Kes Tor Rocks, and then right towards Fernworthy Reservoir, where I happen to know there are a lot of standing stones. It's a great deal of bird life this morning. I've already heard a cuckoo, the robins. It looks like being a beautiful day. This is one of the high points and you can see from here where we're heading to for the rest of the day. Over here is Fernworthy Reservoir, hidden behind the trees. Just tucked out over to the right is the ruins of a farm that we're heading to. This is a natural basin, they're on quite a lot of the tours, although this is one of the largest on Dartmoor. It looks absolutely man-made but it is not, it's a real natural thing. They look absolutely lethal, I don't know quite how deep they are and I do not propose to find out. From here we head west towards Fernworthy Reservoir. And uh, the first big set of stones that we'll come across today. Techno birds are in good voice today. From here, the path is very easily marked by a standing stone. So that's where we're going next. This is Long Stone, which is a boundary marker, nowadays anyway. In 1240 AD, in the perambulation of the forest of Dartmoor, it was referred to as the Langstone. This standing stone has the initials DC, C and GP on the other side marked on it, which stands for Duchy of Cornwall, Chagford and Gidley Parish. From here we head north up the double stone road to Shovel Down, which is the remains of an ancient settlement. I'm not sure what there is to see, but we'll have a look. Come on. The stone road itself takes us over the slope and down to what's called the fourfold stone circle, which is this collection of stones right here four apparently concentric stone rings. It's thought that these two longer stones were actually upright originally and marked the end of this row of stones. From here we move west into what's marked on the map as Shovel Down, which is an extensive Bronze Age field system with the remains of settlements and a stone circle. Now I don't claim to be any expert on prehistoric remains, so with my limited knowledge, this circle, and the ones we'll come across in a minute, are probably hot circles. I keep seeing little lizards darting in and out of the undergrowth. 
just starting to warm up the year, so I'm sure they're coming out to bask in the sunshine. Stone circles seem to be something ritual, but as far as I'm aware no one is absolutely certain. And hut circles are, as the name suggests, huts. And originally, presumably, they would have been covered in some sort of thatched roof. From the air you can actually make out the lines of old field systems, and these are Bronze Age, which means they're around four and a half, five thousand years old. Dharma, of course, is famous for its bogs. It's Quakers, masses of peat that shake. So you have to be a little bit wary how we go around here. The trick, as I recall, is to try and aim for the tufts of grass or to use the rushes as a bit of a mat. There we go. A gate. <laughs> Ahead of us is Fernworthy Forest which has actually got a modern forest. And inside it, there's still the remains of Bronze Age settlements and stone circles, which hopefully we'll come to in a bit. There's a stone with engravings in memory of Royal Maureen Perry, who died in 1992 on an exercise here. From here we follow the edge of Fernworthy Forest heading towards Tainhead Farm, which you can just see in the distance. Fortunately for me anyway, it's been quite dry recently. So these boggy bits aren't quite as squelchy as they might otherwise be, although they're, they're still not absolutely solid. Has to be said that the moor is tender dry at the moment. Could really do with some rain. Up ahead is Tainhead Farmhouse, which surely has to be one of the most remote farmhouses, certainly on Dartmoor, if not in England. It was occupied all the way up until just before the Second World War, and then it was requisitioned by the War Office. To get there, we crossed the lovely Clapper Bridge here, and then just gently climbed the hill. Mm -hmm. 
is the formal approach to the farmhouse, I suppose. Over the last little bridge and up the driveway, guided by the most fearsome of normal creatures, the sheep. Tainhead Farm seems to have been established in about 1780 and was occupied up until the Second World War. It's quite eerie being in this long abandoned farmhouse. 80 years or so, I imagine, it's been abandoned. I quite like abandoned places, but strangely this farm has a sense of melancholy to it. Perhaps because it's not that hard to imagine what the farm must have looked like before it was abandoned. Although a lot of the walls have collapsed, you can still see the outline of the building. The farm gate posts are still standing, but today they're really just a perch for wrens. From here we're heading to Greyweather's Stone Circles, so that means we head back down to the Clapper Bridge and then turn right and head along the path towards the wall. Just over the wall ahead is Grey Weathers, our furthest point for today. Here they are, the Grey Weathers. There you have it, the ancient grey weathers. Except they're not necessarily quite that ancient. I mean, bits of them are. Historically, there were stones here from, I don't know, two and a half thousand years BCE, which makes them, what, four and a half, five thousand years old? But actually, they were reconstructed like this in 1909, which slightly begs the question, <laughs> How authentic are they? And also, does it matter? They are the product of an ancient civilization that lived here, and also the product of people from 1909 who are no longer with us. I actually think it's quite fascinating that they're here and that they've been put back. I don't know if they're the right way up or in the right spots. I presume they're roughly where they were supposed to be. But I love the fact that in 1909, people felt the need to re-erect the stone circles that were here. Grey Weathers is unusual because there are two stone circles quite close to each other. They're roughly north to south and it's not that common for them to be right next to each other. The route from here, we follow the path that goes next to the wall and hopefully we can get into the forest and through down up to the other side. We shall see. Okay, so we have to go around. There we go. Now 
This is Fernworthy Plantation. The air is really cold in here. All the trees look so strange. They're just in neat rows. Nothing growing but moss underneath. my left it's the Fernworthy stone circle and another series of stone rows Because of the forestry operations, this is very different from the last time I was here. The stone circle was in its own little copse, its own little sort of woodland glade. Now it's been opened. There you go. Fernworthy stone circle. Still quite magical. Come on, home time. are the remains of the fields from Fernworthy Farm that was flooded in the 40s to make the reservoir. It makes a nice change from all the conifer trees to see some proper old English trees. So we come back out onto the moor and head on up to the Long Stone, and from there over to Kes Tor, and then home. Fernworthy Forest is a strange place. This is managed woodland, but it just feels very, very bleak. Up to the right is Thornworthy Tor, which you can go up, but I'm not going up today. Path from here, pretty straightforward back down to the road, back to the cattle grid. And that's about it from me. Thank you very much for watching, if indeed you still are. If you've enjoyed this, do please like and subscribe. Join us once again, hopefully, for another walk somewhere. Stay safe.
You can also start to see some of the standing stones that are scattered. Oh, standing stones that are scattered across the... Oh, I can't think of another S. <laughs>